Hey everybody, welcome to Camping with Steve. I've been aimlessly traveling for 2,000 kilometers or around 1,200 miles, trying to avoid the snow and find somewhere that feels like home. And of course, all roads lead west, so I'm in the Pacific Northwest again, kind of like a second home for me. It's about time to clean out my car because as I've been traveling, I really need a campsite with some room so I can pull everything out. I got way too much stuff. And to that note, I'm gonna do a ridiculous setup on here because that's what we do on this channel, is something comfortable and fun, just in our regular old campground. Make some room pulling the carpet out of there, because anything worth doing is worth overdoing. Feels cozier already. The downside of camping out of a car is basically you're just sitting in the car if it starts to rain or something like that. So I got these extendable painter's poles that uh, I'm sure I can rig up some awning on my suction cup roof rack here uh, to keep me out of the elements if it so chooses to rain. The tarp I got to use here is six feet and to spread those painter's poles out I'm using regular, ordinary, over-the-counter, consumer grade Extendable shower curtain rods. Six feet. Let's see what these things can do. Yeah, not very strong. Why are my plans so ridiculous? Yeah, that looks sturdy. <laughs> I got these, uh, No way. Is this going to work? Okay, uh, I got these gear ties. What are they actually called? Just a sec. Okay. They're called gear ties and they're like big, big twist ties and they're reusable and stuff. So I've never used them before. They're, they're kind of sticky. I don't know if this will work very good, but I like trying out new stuff. So, this might work. I know already that these shower curtain poles are not good for the job because they're designed to just hold a shower curtain. And those aren't very heavy. Let's see, that looks like the way to set it up. I got a few ideas on how to attach this. We'll see what works. I got these really strong clips. They make good exercise, actually. Uh, and as long as the wind remains perfectly calm, we're gonna be just fine. That's nice. All right, this is pretty good. I know they actually make awnings I can use, but that's not my style, let's be honest here. Anyway, this contraption's done. I'm gonna start a fire in a little bit, but we got a little daylight and it's a beautiful park. Let's look around. All right, that looks like it'll do. Got some lights up on here as well. I'll kick those in later, but uh, it's so good to see some green on the leaves, like what's left of them. They were gone months ago, back where I came from in Alberta. Look at this. There are some reasonably impressive trees here. They get a lot bigger than this out here on the coast. And, uh, but it's really nice to see. And even if I was allowed to scavenge wood from uh, the outside the campgrounds here, it is saturated. For locals and people with a sharp eye, I have been to this campground before. This is where I did the tent in a tent, except I figure it's a little bit less recognizable without all the snow on the ground. And beautiful sights, probably about 15% of them are occupied, maybe less, just the way I like it. And there's a beach.
Unfortunately, there's very few campgrounds that let you camp right on the beach. Most places have shut it down because people make a mess, light fires, bring their vehicles down, all that wonderful stuff. But this would be the best sound to fall asleep to, I can imagine. This place has a couple hundred sites, but you wouldn't catch me here when they're all open. They've got probably 70 or 80 sites open right now. Of course, washrooms are all closed up, but there are the outhouse types, so they're just as good, right? Starting to make some organizational progress. I sleep in my car with a rice cooker. Do you? Look how unhappy those shower curtain rods are. I don't think they would hold up in a snow or even a slight breeze. So it's a cool experiment, but uh, if we get through the night, I'm going to be very happy. I know it's not any warmer under this thing. It just feels cozier. Anyhow, step two time, because we've got a lot accomplished here today. And it is that time of year. Um, that if you are interested in merch, uh, I do have a store. The only official one is the Crowdmade store and there's gonna be a link. That's all I have to say about that. If you find it anywhere else, it's counterfeit. And there is some of them out there. It's that most wonderful time of the year where the sun sets at 4.30. Uh, it makes it easy to sleep, but hard to cook dinner. Uh, it's only gonna get darker than this. And the sun, despite setting so early, seems to rise disturbingly early, so that rules out sleeping in. Uh, I've got to get this fire going here in a moment. It's cooling off, I can see my breath. Right, fire time. Um, it's store-bought wood, and the story about that, I ran into a guy called, who is a uh, actual BC park ranger, and we got discussing about uh, scavenging wood from the sites around the campsite. And, you know, it's, aside from the fact that it's so wet, um, it's just, if everybody did it, it would just be trampled down. Um, so it, it was cool to meet him. He didn't want to be filmed. He didn't want me to say his name. Um, but, you know, whatever we can do around here, Keep things as environmentally friendly as possible, we want to do. Time to start cooking some food. And one of the best parts about bringing everything with you is that you have everything. Look at all this. Um, Got everything other than a flipper, but this piece of kindling is going to work just fine. Uh, got a little bit of camping spice on it, but there's nothing to worry about there. I'm just making a really simple traditional mac and cheese uh, with some baby bok choy and a garlic white wine reduction. So, let's roll. The great thing with the campsites open here well into November, and actually this one year-round for certain sites, is that they're open. Um, on the downside, they don't have water, so here I am. Up to my old tricks. And we'll boil up some, uh, some macaroni. Oh yeah, that's gonna not have a problem at all. In my journeys, I have found three awesome stealth camping spots. And that's kind of the goal of the whole thing. Um, travel around, camp pretty basic. Aside from all this hullabaloo and the carpet and whatnot, and the lights. Uh, the whole goal is to kind of travel around in my car, find these spots, and the next one, yeah, it's okay. 
but the two after that I was pretty blown away when I found them not quite roundabout material but whatever uh, I don't think anything's gonna top that macaroni a la Steve I know why do I always cook a meal for four the world is made for a family of four I used to cook for two but uh, that was even tricky and now cooking for one on the road they don't sell a quarter can of chicken broth and they don't sell a quarter pound of ground beef or anything like that you have to buy a family size portion uh, so I cook it all and have leftovers the next day that's uh, nothing wrong with eating four days of the same thing right some 10% cream. A little bit of sour cream. Old cheddar. How old? We'll find out. Smells good. butter in there. Our garlic seems to be the theme of the evening. Mm -hmm. Some white wine in there. Oyster sauce. meets macaroni. This is the creamiest mac and cheese I've ever had probably due to the cream and the sour cream, but no, this is the way to do it. And that recipe hits home on the bok choy, I'll have to say that. No measurements, I just kind of eyeballed the whole thing, but. It's nice to not cook a meal out of a backpack, that's for sure. Traveling around in this little clown car circus tent thing here, full to the brim of way more than I need, and I just can't figure out what the perfect vehicle would be for what I'm trying to do. Uh, aimlessly drive around, I think something bigger than this, I think like a minivan would probably be the most ideal. Um, something that could tow something though. There's unfortunately like no one vehicle that's going to do everything I want. Um, and I have the weirdest ones, you know, the smallest camper I could buy, school bus, uh, that type of stuff, and I don't get enough use out of them all. So I think something like middle of the road, utilitarian, useful vehicle would be best. But ever since the days when I lived in a motorhome, um, that was huge, burned a ton of gas, stuck out like a sore thumb, and... After that, I always said I would probably 
always buy a vehicle that I could live in if worse comes to worse. And like with this thing, it's tight. It's a tight squeeze, but it's it's doable. Uh, the Rav Four, uh, particularly if you're shorter than six feet, you can slide in the back. Okay, I got to kind of like wiggle diagonally a little bit, and it'll take some work. But it was a fun trip so far, and it's only beginning. the The stealth is on the way, and I'm I'm so eager to do this. Uh, the the next couple of videos. Like, I'm, I don't even want to be filming this one, but when I film these ones, I got to be long gone. I got to be out of the area because it's two in succession very close, and I don't want the locals to clue in that I might be still around in the area. So it's, it's somewhere, but it's a secret. Oh yeah, let's uh, crawl into the back here. Okay, yeah, severely overloaded SUV. Ready to hunker down. Crawl into here. Oh yeah, cozy enough for me. Okay, good to be in the car. Uh, it feels a lot warmer, even though I'm sure it's not. Not a lot of insulation in these things, and they do cool off eventually. But I have my night lights on on the awning. In case I gotta rummage around outside or find my way to the washroom. Also, in that case, I've got the flashlight there. That's my system as I hang it on one side. And on the other side, I hang my keys. And I get some people asking, uh, you know, how do you feel safe camping? Or how would, you know, like a single traveler or a single woman feel safe if they're camping? I don't always feel safe, but um, like you got bear spray handy, um, you got keys that you can push an alarm button, you can lock your doors, unlock your doors if you need to. Um, see, look at that. Um, safe as a bug in here. And I got my night light off on. So I don't have a time lapse going because my external battery died on me. And it's unfortunate because I really wanted one with the trees and everything, but I pretty much started doing them when I was going to sleep with no tent in some really cold weather. And I said, nobody's going to believe I actually did this. Um, they're going to start calling me out. So I said, oh, I'll just film myself on time lapse overnight. I had to use little hand warmers on the camera. Like it was my cell phone. I didn't even have a GoPro back then. So I was using hand warmers to keep everything running and I was surprised it worked. Uh, it was still running in the morning and there were so many comments that said, hey, that's cool. Uh, it adds something to the videos. And so I kept doing it. Uh, but unfortunately, I'm in the market for a new power pack. So um, cheers, everybody. We will talk to you in the morning and sweet dreams. Good morning, that was an awesome sleep. Um, I'm gonna put my shoes on and calmly and quickly run to that outhouse. Um, then we'll take this thing apart and get out of here. I got the defrost going to get the condensation off all those windows. And the ultimate test of anything is how quickly can you take it down and get out of here? So let's find out. Yeah, that contraption on the roof came off really quick. Uh, those reusable twist tie things, the gear ties, they did a great job. And I'm gonna roll up this carpet, throw everything in there, and uh, get out of here, because I gotta make some miles to film the next stealth camping video. And I'm hoping to be filming that possibly tomorrow or the next day. So stay tuned. We got beautiful weather here coming up for the next little while. 
So I don't see anything stopping me from achieving my stealthy ambitions over the next few weeks here. I'm certainly enjoying the, uh, the brisk yet humid Pacific Northwest air. Definitely beats the frosty, snowy prairie air. Thank you guys for watching this quick little camping update trip thing. Stay tuned. Um, next stop, adventure. Thanks for watching.